Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Erica with Memory Box Candle Co. and I make videos all about making and selling candles. And today's video is just going to be an updated video on how I design my candle labels, how I print them, the printer I use, the paper I use. We're gonna go through all of that. So first things first, um, I do everything in Canva. This is my second account because I wanted to show you guys that you can still design and export your designs to your printing software if you don't have the Canva Pro account, you can just use a free account. Um, but this is all on my free account and I'm just gonna show you guys how I go about doing it. So right up here, you click on create a design and I click on custom size. So this is automatically selected to pixel size, but I wanna do in inches because I'm going to be doing a three by 2.5 inch label design. All right, so now it brought me over here and this is just a blank canvas. So the first thing that I'm gonna show you guys over here is just everything that they have. So you can click on certain elements, some things, if it has a little crown right there, it's pro, meaning you aren't able to use it, um, as well as with the text with the fonts. So if I come over here, you can see that things have a little crown next to it and you aren't able to use it if you don't have the pro account. But I will show you that you can still create a lot of really nice designs even just having the free account and I'm also going to be showing you guys a website that I use to be able to get really cute elements um, onto my designs. Okay, so this is a place called Creative Market, and if you haven't heard of Creative Market before, they have so many options. I mean, they have fonts, watercolor designs, different PNG elements, um, and if you aren't familiar with what a PNG is, a PNG is basically just where you don't have a background to it. So it's just that image, and you don't have a white background behind it. So if you come up here and you just type in elements, so if I type in elements like that. I don't know if it took it. Yep. So coming down here, you can see they have a lot of really pretty designs, gold, um, if you want to do, you know, certain themes, watercolor, you know, a lot of things that are really kind of, you could say, are in style right now uh, is on this website. And the one that I actually purchased for this video is this one right here. And to be honest, it's because these little line drawings are really, really popular. And also, um, it was really inexpensive. I know it's not showing it right here, but it was $6 for 45 vector line images. And vector is basically just, you can size it to any size and it's not going to lose the quality. It's going to be able to, like you could blow it up on a billboard if you wanted to and it's not going to lose any quality because it doesn't have any pixels like a JPEG image does. All right, so if we come back over to the design over here on Canva, I'm just gonna show you how I wanted to design this for today's video. So I did already go through um, because otherwise I'd be sitting here kind of trying to decide how to do it. It takes me a little bit when it comes to designing. So we are going to do a coconut and pineapple scent. And one thing that I wanted to mention to you guys because I just recently found out about this. I had no idea that you could do kerning in Canva, and kerning is where you can adjust the space in between the letters. I tried looking this up multiple times. I was not able to find it until I watched this one video, and it's right there. It just says spacing. So right here under letter, you can adjust this, and it's going to adjust the space in between all of the letters. And let me tell you that it gives it such a different look. Even if you kept it like that and you made it smaller, it just gives it a whole nother look than what it looked like before. So I'm actually going to change this, I believe, to about 100 to where there's still a space in between them. Actually, you know what? Let's do about 150. See what that looks like. That's a little bit better. So I'm going to just leave that right there. And then for pineapple, I'm going to do more of a script type of font. So I'm gonna take off, take off caps lock and I'm gonna type in pineapple. And then I'm going to type in script. And it's going to bring up all the scripts that Canva has for free. This one right here I really like because it is a little bit more shallow in the text because a lot of the other script fonts that I have or that I was trying was taking this L all the way up. And I don't like it where it 
goes into the next word. It just becomes really messy. And I really like the, the, the way that these two fonts look together. So I'm gonna make this a little bit bigger and the way that you can make both of them bigger is just how I did it. So I just drag it over and then you're able to kind of do this. You can also go up here and group them together so that I just want them the way they are no matter what. Even if I'm over here, I come back to it and I'm able to grab them and move them around. This is going to be a really, really simple label, but it's really just to show you guys what you can do on Canva and to explore creative market and really just kind of play around with it because even when I was preparing for today's video, it still took me a little over an hour to get a design going in my head on what I wanted to do and before I actually filmed this video. So it takes a while. It's not something that you can do within a few minutes. A lot of times it takes weeks to really perfect a candle label. Okay, so now that I have this set right here, I'm just going to import one of these little line art designs that I had purchased. And all you do in order to import that into Canva is just go to Uploads, you click on Upload Media, and then you just click on wherever it was saved in your computer. And I'm just going to import this little line drawing right here just because I feel like it kind of goes with the tropical theme of coconut and pineapple. And I'm just gonna leave it like that. And then I'm just going to do a brand name right up there and I'm going to add in another text design and change up the font. And I'm going to click on this one right here. This is the one that I wanted to do and I'm going to keep it in all capitals. And if you guys have seen my other candle label design videos before in the past, I always like to do Sunshine Candle Company as the kind of name that I use for this fake label design. And I'm gonna make this a little bit smaller and I'm gonna change the kerning too. So let me try 75, let's try 100. I like the way that that looks, so I'll bring it over there. And I always like to make sure that this is all the way as close as possible, because if it's all the way out here, it's not going to be centered where it needs to be. It's always good to have these as tight as possible up against the lettering and then you you know that it's all going to be centered and then we are going to make this a beeswax candle so i will actually show you something real fast so i clicked on add a subheading um what you can also do let me delete that is you can actually click on this copy it and paste it because i'm going to be using the same font so i'm just going to do beeswax candle and this one i'm actually going to make a little bit smaller me just that right there so let me zoom in because that is the one thing with canva that I don't like is when it's all boxy with where you could adjust everything so I'm gonna just by zooming in you can make it to where let me show you so up here when you're back like this it's a little bit more you can't only move it back a little bit further it's kind of adjusting itself on how how much it's moving up but when you zoom in a lot closer, then you can really kind of adjust it little by little. And I like that a lot more. All right, so I could probably adjust this forever, but that's really how it is when you are designing label designs as you are constantly adjusting things. You know, do I wanna make this smaller? Do I wanna move it down? Do I wanna bring it up? You know, should I move all these down a little bit more and this one up a little bit more this way? There's so much that you can do and there's little things that you'll notice and that you'll see as you are continuing to look at it that you want to adjust. But I think I'm gonna leave everything like that. And what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to actually download this onto my computer. So right up here is where you can title it. So if I type in coconut and pineapple label, and then you're gonna come over here and click on download. And you can either download it as a PNG, a JPEG, a PDF um, standard or a PDF print. And we're just gonna keep it on PNG. Now the way that Canva does it is you can either do a regular PNG Im image, which is going to be the highest quality image. But if you don't have the pro version, you are not able to have a transparent background, which means that when you download it, it's still going to have the white background, which is okay in this example, because when I print out the label, it's going to have a white background anyways. So it doesn't really matter. So I'm just gonna click on download. 
All right, so I went ahead and I downloaded that onto my computer. And what I'm gonna do now is use Maestro Label Designer from Online Labels to actually print out my designs. So that's where I get all of my paper from. All of the blank labels that I get are always from Online Labels. And this size is the 2.5 by three inch label size. However, if you had seen over here, I did three inches by 2.5 inches. So on here, this actually took me a little while to figure out what I had done before when I wanted to do more of the horizontal way was I would just kind of flip my head and design it like this. But I realized you can just go to view and click on rotate label view and it will just rotate it for you so much easier. And now I'm just going to upload that design that we just exported. All right, so I just uploaded it. So I'm just going to import it into this design. And as you can see, there is that white background, but again, doesn't matter in this case because we want it to be white anyways. And to be completely honest, this is going to be the most challenging part of the process when it comes to printing is trying to figure out the size that you need and trying to figure out the uh, calibration of your printer, if you need to calibrate it, um, if things are going to be off-centered, how you are going to align it properly. This is all going to be the most challenging part when it comes to printing something out. So I will try to give you guys as many helpful tips as I possibly can. So this to me is pretty centered. Um, I'm more looking at this little dotted line than anything. Um, there will be this extra space up here, but depending on the printer that you have, every every printer will have different bleed lines. So every printer will have a different area where it just won't print anymore. So that's why they kind of give you these little guidelines right here to make sure that your entire image will be printed out onto your label design. So now I have a Mac computer, but I always had a regular PC computer for years and years whenever I would design my labels and print them out. So I will show you how to do this on a Mac. So I just go up here to print now and I never ever do this. I know it says for best results, I recommend to do this. I personally don't do it and I never have done it before. Even on my PC computer, I just go down here and open directly from browser. And as you can see, every Thing is on here and that's going to be kind of the way it's going to print out. Now something else I want to show you is that I don't want to print out all of these at once. If you're just trying to figure out the alignment and you don't want to go through all of these sheets of paper, then what I recommend you do is come over here and you can edit the layout. So you can make all of these blank except for that first one so that when you come back over to print and you click on open directly from your browser, it's only going to print out that one label. And then from here, I just do Command P for print, and it's automatically set to my Dymo label writer, but I'm just going to adjust this for my HP LaserJet printer, and this is the one that I use for everything. And these are the settings that I do. I do 100% scale. Um, I don't change any of this. I just keep it all the same. I don't know if I had to adjust this when I first did it, but this is US letter size, and then I go ahead and click print. Now, one thing I will say when you are printing out on a PC computer, like an HP laptop or a Dell laptop or whatever it is, what I do is I click it to default. So under settings, you're able to adjust the size, scale it, whatever it is. All I do is click default, and that is how I was able to make sure that it was always being printed inside of the guides, inside of the actual label size, and it wasn't getting all crazy on me. All right, guys, so this is the label paper that I use, and I do the weatherproof polyester for laser printers, and this is the 2.5 inch by 3 inch labels. There are nine labels per sheet, and I, for the longest time, did just the regular glossy white labels, but I found that these ones are actually easier to peel off, and they don't leave any residue behind, and also they are a little bit more matte, and they go more with my matte black jars. So so that is why I switched over to these. They are a little bit more expensive, but I personally think it's worth it. And what I do is I'm just going to load it into my printer. And just so you guys can see, this is what my printer is. It is a really, really cool printer. I absolutely love it. And the loading area is right down here. 
and I'm just going to load it and I'm going to put the sticker side up and put it into the printer. All right, so that's all good to go. Let me just double check. So it looked like it looks like it printed it out really well. Let me see if I can focus that for you guys. So you can see that. And so what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to apply it onto my jar. And one thing I do want to mention for you guys is that I'm actually able to rub my finger over it and I don't have to worry about any smudging. I know that smudging is a really big issue for everybody when it comes to printing out labels. That is probably the biggest concern that I get when it comes to printing out labels. And I used to actually have to deal with smudging a lot when I had an inkjet printer, but I was able to fix it by going into the settings of my, of my printer settings and change the quality from high quality to standard quality. A lot of times if you have it set to the highest quality, it's going to look really nice when it prints out, but even after it's been sitting for a couple of days, it could still get really smudgy. Um, I noticed that with both the white gloss labels as well as the weatherproof labels for inkjet printers that they got really smudgy after a while, but changing the printer settings from high quality to standard will take down the amount of ink that the printer is putting onto the paper, which could potentially reduce that smudging. Also, I do wanna point out that at this time, this would be the perfect time to do any foiling. If you wanna do any foiling, this would actually be a really cute label to foil, um, but I'm just going to keep it just the way it is, and I'm gonna peel it off and actually show you guys that it printed pretty well when it comes to not being off-centered or not aligned or anything. And I'm just going to put it onto my candle jar. Now with these, these are really, really thin. If you've ever worked with these polyester laser weatherproof labels, they are really, really thin. So I noticed that I got a lot more bubbling on these ones than I ever did with the white gloss ones because they were a little bit thicker. So with these, I have to make sure that I am really, really pulling tight when I am putting this on and when I smooth it down, I am smoothing from middle to ends. So I'm pushing it out to make sure that there's no bubbling happening. And how cute is this, you guys? Oh my gosh, I'm actually really, really happy with the way that this turned out. This is really, really cute. Oh, and the last thing that I wanted to mention before I end today's video is when it comes to the warning sticker. So if you guys don't know, I do sell custom warning label templates on my Etsy shop. And let me just kind of get a close up of this so you guys can see. And this is the area where you can add a lot more that you don't actually add to your candle label design. So if you want your candle label design to be really, really simple, kind of like how I have it in this video, this is where you're actually able to add in the net weight. So right down here is where I custom added the net weight just so I don't have to add it onto the candle. So as you can see, there's nothing shown on here, but as long as you have it on the candle somewhere, that is what's most important. So I just wanted to throw that in there in case some of you guys are also looking for more of a minimalistic style to your candle label designs and you don't want to have it crowded with too much information. But anyways, guys, that is going to do it for today's video. I really hope you guys enjoyed seeing this whole process. If you did, make sure to leave this video a thumbs up as well as subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And don't forget to follow me over on Instagram at Memory Box Candle Co. And I will see you guys in the next video. Bye, guys.